Okay, then. now that looks great. Yeah. Very good, very good. Well, we've got the boat flipped over now, and we're about to start planking. I had cut an angle on the stem for the first planks up a little bit higher than where I needed it, but I have to continue that all the way to the top. It's the same angle, the planks coming into the stem everywhere. So the bearding line, which is the line on the side of the stem, it's consistent all the way up there. So there's only one tool that I would use for something like this, because there's quite a bit of material to uh, remove. Uh, you know, I could cut it with some sort of a saw or something like that, but this is just so much easier. You can split a line with it and everything else. Anything you can do with a hand plane, almost, you can do with an electric plane. And uh, I've put most of my hand planes down, really, because of the use of electric planes. Well, down near the other plank, it's a little bit more difficult to get that electric plane to work. You can do it, but you have to concentrate on it a little bit. And, uh, you know, from there up, there's nothing to it, so. Well, we're checking the bevel on the stem here. <laughs> Looks great. Might have one tiny little spot to remove a little bit right in here, and that's it. I put a number of beads of polysulfide up and down the stem right here, and one bead the length of the plank. It's not going to glue the planks together, but it's going to be a bedding for them. And, uh, the other thing I have to do is mock the center of the frames because the screw that I put in at the top of the other plank is covered up now. I don't know where that is. If I put the plank up there, I could have trouble trying to find the center of the frame. So I just mock the center of the frame before I get going. This lumber is really, really nice. It comes from Florida. It's Atlantic white cedar. And you can get it in big, long lengths. I think that this, this plank, and when I bought it, was almost 30 feet long. And it was sawn in Rhode Island you know, from a timber. It wasn't uh, sawn in Florida and delivered up as flitches. So uh, a good friend of mine does the milling, and uh, it's fantastic stuff. It would be like almost impossible, if not totally impossible, to get northern white cedar to do a job like this. You know, you might get shorter lints and you'd have to splice them together or something, which wouldn't be the end of the world. But it's very nice to have full length plank, and believe me. Well, we've got the second plank on on the starboard side, and before we put the port side plank on, I just wanted to speak with you guys a little bit about these frames. Now, it's pretty tricky to get these frames standing up exactly right and make the boat look really, really nice. When I built the boat, I had the sole level, or what I thought would be level, and that way I could plumb the frames. But, uh, you know, it's funny, they don't look plumb, but they are. They're 90 degrees, if you go 90 degrees from the plank to the other side, it won't line up with that frame, and then you plumb it. But once you do the other side, you can line the two frames up with each other, and they line up perfectly. Now, you know, I've built a few plank, a few boats, a uh, few skiffs in the uh, years gone by, and um, I didn't get this exactly right. Some of them were a little scattered on different angles, and that looked terrible, you know, and if you got them all kind of off in one direction, that looks terrible too. And uh, this has a funny look to it, to it, but when the gunnels are on it and everything, you don't notice it. It looks the way it's supposed to look. You know, like I say, this is the conical section of the boat right here. And these have to be sighted 90 degrees to the plank and to the other side, and then put a plumb bob on the other side, and then you can plumb the frame. And you do the same thing on the other side and check the two against each other. And then pretty soon you're satisfied and that's where you put them. You know, I can't move them. They're fastened to this plank. They have to be put in there properly, otherwise there's nothing I can do about it. So, uh, you know, I think I've done the right thing. And I'm sure that it'll look really nice when we're all done with it. I've got to cut the plank off up forward there with my handsaw. And, uh, you know, my handsaw wants to cut nice and straight, and the stem is a little curved, so it'll start to fall off the stem just a tiny bit at the bottom, but that's not a problem. I just whip that right off with electric plane. Now, on the other side, I've got most of that knocked off. Now, I've got those marks, and like I said, they're consistent up and down the stem. It's the same angle coming in everywhere. That's not the same on every boat. All boats are uh, different, and a lot of them change the angle as they go, and a lot of stems are rabbited. This is just a hang over and cut off situation at the stem here. Well, I've just knocked back the angle on the stem on the port side, and I'm just checking it with like a little batten here. Uh, and it's, uh, it's quite good, but it needs a little bit more taken off right in this area right here. So I'm gonna accomplish that. 
just like the first side. It's a little tricky at the very bottom where the plane kind of contacts the other plank, but no big deal. Okay, then, now that looks great. Yeah. Very good, very good. Here we go, I'm hanging the second plank on the port side, and we're getting somewhere now. Every time you put one of these planks on, the boat looks twice as big. We clamp it down up forward, and uh, you know, get a little tiny bit of space in it, and we wrap it around with the stern end of it uphill. Halsey's helping me with that. And the idea of that is we don't wanna like clamp it down tight up forward and then try to bring it in, because what'll happen is it'll just wipe all the bed and compound right off, and it'll end up all over the place. It stains terrible. You have to be really careful with this stuff so you don't get it somewhere where it doesn't belong. So we'll pinch it up forward and uh, get it down close, and then I'll work my way aft, pinching it down nice and tight and keeping it clamped. Then I'll go back up forward and start fastening it, because I wouldn't want to fasten it on both ends it could get a little bit longer as you, as you fasten it on and you'd be pushing the transom out or something like that. So, you know, the way to do it is clamp it on full length and then fasten it later. Well, this is done just a little bit differently than on a skiff because a skiff has a flat bottom. So you can put like a bar clamp on there and tighten the planks together like that. Pretty simple. This you can't because the clamp will just keep sliding off. So I've got the frames up higher than they need to be and I'm using the frame as a, as a, a basis for putting a little fulcrum on here. And I just put a little wedge into there like that and just pry right down on it and you can see it, see it starting to squeeze it right out. See that? So it works fantastic, but I want to hold on to it while I'm drilling. And uh, you know, if I didn't have these little marks that I made down here, we'd have a hard time, believe me, figuring out where to put the screws. Now, especially when you're drilling the holes, you want to hold it down tight. Because if you don't, when you put the screws in, it'll just come right back up again. And if anything, the screws would be on just the tiniest downslope because then It'll pull it down at the same time as you're trying to pull it in. So uh, these may be basically 90 degrees right here, but. Like that. Now when I'm screwing these planks on, you have to be pretty careful. Like I said, you have to have the plank right down in position before you drill the holes. You know, and then when you've got it there, you just hold it in place really carefully. And uh, we're using two inch number 12 bronze screws. We get them from Fairwinds Fasteners. It's the only type of fastening to use in a situation like this. I, I've built many boats with galvanized fastenings and they were fine but stainless steel doesn't work at all. It just goes to crevice corrosion in no time flat. A lot of people want me to use stainless steel because they think it's way better, but the bronze is the thing, believe me. They're flathead wood screws, and I'm drilling the holes with a tapered drill bit with a little countersink when it comes down that controls the depth. And uh, you know, I'm using battery powered equipment for this. Amazingly enough, one battery will screw all the screws on both sides of the boat and I think you could drill every hole in the entire boat with one battery so battery powered equipment has seeped into my work believe me when you're sinking these screws we're going to sink them down just below the surface a little bit enough to putty it we're not going to drill them you know countersink and put plugs in the whole boat skiffs just don't warrant that kind of stuff so you know we just sink them in maybe a sixteenth of an inch maybe a little bit more as they get down the head, you're pulling the head into that plank pretty tight. So you have to have that screwdriver bit in there real tight, lined up properly. It has to be the right size and it has to be sharp. The biggest problem you could have here really is slipping out of the slot. But, you know, it just very seldomly happens if you get lined up properly. You can tell as soon as you pull the trigger if it's clicking like that. So you want to end up lined right up with it nice. You gotta do it early while the screw is sticking out. Get yourself lined up because once it's down there, you can't really tell. Some people might think that 
straight slot screws are much harder to drive than anything else. A straight slot screw is probably the easiest to drive and uh, you can get more torque on it than any other kind of screw. And besides that, they don't make bronze screws and Phillips heads or torque drives or anything like that. You know, you're stuck with a straight slot screw or a Fearson head, which is kind of like a Phillips head, but a little bit different. I never liked those either, so this is what I use. I've been using them all my life, and I'm sure I'll use them forever. They're also much easier to get out than any other kind of screw. I'm just sinking the final screws up here at the stem, and I've got one or two more in that place than I do in the rest of the frames, because bow and stern, the plank is trying to pry itself off, and all the way down the boat, the rest of the frames, the plank is trying to hold itself on. You wouldn't even have to put screws in it, and it would stay there. We're doing the starboard side first. We do it exactly the same way we did the plank previous. We get it clamped on there a little bit away from the bedding, pry it down as you go, and uh, fasten it in. And I can tell you for sure that that last plank really brings this boat into uh, the appearance that I really like. And it's making me pretty happy because this is the stage that makes the boat really come together, really rapidly, actually. The gunnels will be next. We'll cut the shear in it and uh, it's going to look exactly like the model that I built on the drawing board years ago. I've had that model kicking around all this time, the same amount of time I had this plank and transom and stem made years ago. So it's a great thing to be putting it together. And believe me, that model wasn't any easier to build than this boat was to build, really. It was very difficult with super glue and holding it together and all that stuff. But, uh, you know, I was motivated to do it because I had this boat in my mind years before I even made the model. Well, look at that. We're planked up. And uh, the next thing for us to do is put the guards on it. But the shear isn't cut yet. That's why I left the top screw out so that when I cut the shear right, I can put a screw where it won't clash with the screw that I'm going to hold the uh, guard on with. So, you know, I only get a couple of screws at the bottom. And, uh, you know, but it's nice and tight against the other one. These are the planks that I fit on the floor, right, a long time ago. You know, I didn't have to do any fitting or planing or anything. I had fit them on the floor with a skill saw, ripping one off the other. So, you know, it works really good. I, I knew it would be. It's the way I do it all the time. And uh, the shear is a little high. So, uh, <laughs> we're all going to get together, I think, at some point and argue about where the shear should be because, you know, it isn't perfectly determined. And when I scaled it off the model, it makes it look a little high. You know, the model is kind of hard to tell exactly what the dimensions of the boat would look like when you build it. So every skiff I do, I do the shear afterwards, right? And most of the time, the shear is 90 degrees to the side. But on this one, it's got so much flare up in this area that I don't want it to be 90 degrees to the side. It will be too far up. So I'm going to cut it down so it's almost level, but not quite. And I'm going to do it with a progressive bevel and skill saw, I hope, right, and cut into the frames at the same time. So that'll put the heads of the frames right where they belong. I'll have to uh, finish it up with a hand saw because the skill saw won't go all the way through. So that's pretty neat. Now, back aft here, that's the pit that I designed into it. You could make like a wooden grate for it, like out of teak or something, so water would go through it and into the pit. You can have a bilge pump and a float switch down in there. And of course, those cavities are open all the way forward. You guys have heard of hang over and cut off. That's the way the skiff is built, all kinds of stuff. Cutting the frames off or cutting the shear, you know, cutting the ends of the planks. Now, I'm going to cut the end of this plank off. And I'm going to show you how to do it. And I'm going to show you how not to do it. If you put a saw on there like that, tilt it uphill like that, and start sawing, you'll never make it. It'll saw into the transom because stuff gets trapped between the saw and here. And what happens is it turns the saw like that. You end up cutting into the transom. I've done it a million times. I cannot control it that way. You just can't do it. The way you have to do it is you have your saw facing downhill like that. And then you don't have any problem. And you can see this side. And you can stay right on it. Let's see how successful we get. Now, I've cleaned all the bedding out of the corner because I don't want it all in the teeth of my saw. Just like that, nice and flush with the transom.
<laughs> I can't wait to climb up inside of it. I've been working on the outside of it so long. Here we go. <laughs> well, look at the inside of this boat. It just looks great. I sanded the planking so it looks real nice before I put it on because you can't sand up to the frames. You have all kinds of problems. You know, you can't spread that bedding compound around. It gets in the grain. You have no chance of getting it off afterwards. So, you know, what we'll do with that is wait for it to dry 100%. It could take three or four days. You can speed it up by putting a little water on it because it's hydrogen cure. But we'll just let it, we'll just let it dry. And then you can take a putty knife and just strip it right off just as easy as pie. And the outside, the same thing. Of course, the outside will be sanded or finished a little bit, so that's not a problem either. And uh, I, I, it's just wonderful. It really is. This boat's going to ride real nice. I love the idea of steering it from back aft because you see the whole boat in front of you. And it's stout. I, I, just by looking at it, anybody can tell how stout it is. And it's a little heavy, but... They move so easy with this type of uh, dead rise back aft that uh, a small amount of horsepower will get it right up like no problem whatsoever. You could always put, you could put 250 horsepower on this thing. You could put two 250 horsepowers on it, but I think it's unnecessary, so. And it just looks great. The shear has to come down a little bit, maybe three inches actually. And uh, you know, the difference between this and a hot flat bottom skiff, it's got more flair. You know, and the only thing about it is you have to have an a in whale, and you want that above your kneecaps at least. So if you were to lean on there, you're not leaning on your kneecaps. You'd be leaning on your thighs right here. So, you know, uh, that's just the one difference between it and a skiff. And to get that flare, it was kind of easy because we have the stem out on that angle. That makes the flare up in the forward sections much easier to build. And... Uh, I mean, we put these side planks on in, a, in two days, only about a half a day a piece. Well, this is going to be a fun boat to drive because we're going to drive it from back aft with a stick. It makes it very maneuverable with the stick rather than a wheel. And back aft, it rides like a dream. Up forward, it would pound a little bit, or like in a flat bottom skiff, pound terrible. You have to drive one from back aft if you've got a flat bottom skiff. But that's the way to drive this one, too. I'll have a stick on the motor. It's wonderful because you see the whole boat in front of you going through the waves or the swells and it just gives you a scope of what's going on. I can't wait to put this thing in the water and take it for a cruise. It's beautiful. It really is. Uh, it's not because I said so. <laughs> it just is. It's gorgeous. So, like I said, we're going to get together and talk about the shear and then I'll cut the shear. The next thing is put on the guards. <laughs> 